When we discovered magic, it gave us an outlet to focus on something that we could improve. Um, we can improve our skill, we can express our creativity, and also it opened doors to travel to conventions all over the country. And thankfully, our parents let us travel alone, starting at a really young age. But pretty early on in our magic journey, we joined the International Brotherhood of Magicians. It was at these meetings that we met Ricky. There's a joke in the community that Ricky is the founder of the Buck Twins. And I think it's true because he was our mentor growing up. I was the only kid at the Magic Club for the longest time. I went there with all these, all these old, old people. And then one day, like, two kids came in. And I was like, what? Other kids? And I was so excited. And they didn't know very much. And I had, like, a small set of knowledge that I was really excited about. I had some books on, like, Chris Kenner's uh, Sybil Cut. And I remember seeing him do Sybil for the first time. It was incredible. It was like nothing else was like it. Uh, so we had to learn that, and that opened up so many other doors for us as far as cardistry goes. Because Dan and I were two of the first to, to really focus on card flourishes as its own art form, like right from the beginning we saw potential in this becoming like skateboarding. We, and we always used to describe it like skateboarding with playing cards. So in that regard, we knew that it would eventually evolve into its own art form. I met Dave Buck in uh, 2003 when Dave was a young buck and uh, drove down from Sonora, California to the Apple Store in South Coast Plaza. We immediately became friends and that was the beginning of it. Where they're from is a small town in Northern California called Sonora. There wasn't much of a creative outlet besides playing cards. So when Dave found out that I was at SC Film School, he told me, that's where I want to go. When we were in high school, we wanted to be filmmakers. Since we were kids, we've always loved film. We used to make short films growing up in our small, in our small town. We dreamed of going to USC Film School. Um, we applied, we had a, an amazing set of letters of recommendation from some really high up industry professionals that we met through the magic world. But with that said, you know, it is the luck of a draw, as you probably know. There's so many, I think they get like 50,000 applicants a year, so we did not get in. We were very disappointed, <laughs> but maybe it was for the best. Dan and Dave only used cards. That was every day with them. You'd go get coffee, it was cards, it was cards. It was walking through the mall, it was cards. 24 hours a day, I don't even know when they slept. We, we were just like young and alive and we would do cards and we were very excited about meeting women. And so we'd go to like bars just like and sit there with our cards like this <laughs> and be like, how come the women are coming over? What's going on here? <laughs> the first time I met Ricky Smith, Dan, Dave and I went to a bar and we had some drinks and um, nobody said anything. They were just playing with their cards. And I said it, I looked at my watch or my phone to see what time it was. And 20 minutes went by before anyone said a word. Because I was not going to break the ice and just see what happens. Like, how long can three, four people sit at a table and not talk? And yeah, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so the system, first of all, was one of the first, I think it was the first DVD on flourishes. It was so long ago that um, this was back when DVD players had errors. So certain discs wouldn't play in certain uh, DVD players. So we would take a trip to the Costa Mesa Best Buy and we'd put the system in all the different DVD players to test it out. They dropped their system DVD, got me into it. Just their style, their creativity, their, their flair, their whole image, I guess, kind of like really kind of drawn me towards them. The trilogy uh, was something we decided to do after we received our rejection letters from USC Film School. For the trilogy, they had moved to Las Vegas. They were monk-like in their approach to, to um, anything with cards. They were absolutely monk-like. They had no time for anything. There was no drinking, no drugs, no partying. There was just playing cards. We decided to make this epic project that had been brewing in the back of our minds for some time. Basically, we would film all of the 
tricks and flourishes we had written up in our lecture notes over the years, plus all the new stuff we had created that hadn't been written up. And we put it together in this crazy three volume set called Tricks, Flourishes, and Everything Else, which was everything else that didn't fit within the first two categories. It looked like a really cool Criterion style DVD set. Like they folded out, it had a book in it. It was very nice. It took us about two years to make. But when we came out with that, that's pretty much what started our business. We're like, okay, this, this could be something big, you know. And then when we released it, we were just overwhelmed by the immediate success. I think it's created a lot of, um, I don't know, it was, it, we didn't really have to try to sell it. It just sort of sold itself. So if, if it wasn't for Dan and Dave, I don't think I really ever would have gotten into cardistry because it was really the trilogy that um, kind of introduced me to it. I just kind of wanted some cool flashy card tricks to learn and got the trilogy and ended up being more addicted to the Flourishes DVD than the tricks one. Um, I met Dave through a friend of mine named Blaze and Blaze lived in Dave and Dan's building and I'd heard about the twin magicians who lived in the building for years before I actually met him in person. So we met at my friend's birthday party and I he introduced myself and I was like, oh, you're one of the magicians. And I was really excited to meet him. And he was really, really shy. Um, not, he's not nearly that shy anymore, but he kind of just walked away. And <laughs> I didn't know if I'd ever talk to him again. Um, but later on, he had some liquid courage and met me on the dance floor. And then we had a nice conversation. And the rest is history. I think right after we met, he went and traveled to speak at a magic conference in Portugal. He was gone for a while, and he told me that he travels a lot for, for magic. And I didn't know what that meant and what he was doing out there, but um, the first year I met, he was gone quite a bit, and then the second year we were together, he went to, I think he did his China tour, or his Asia tour then, so he was gone for over a month. And he just told me that's how, that's how life is, is like to date someone like him. We have a, a little girl. She's almost two. She was born three months premature. People, people say it's scary, but I wasn't scared. I was always confident she would be okay. So a brick of cards is 12 decks and they come in a box. And she was so small that she could literally fit inside a brick box. Like she was so, uh, so small, under a pound at one point. And now she's like normal and she looks like a baby. <laughs> So DanandDave.com was actually, if I remember correctly, a high school project. We took a we took a number of computer classes in high school. One of them required us to make an HTML website, and I think the original URL was just PasteboardAnimations.com, and then eventually, well, soon after that, we changed it to DanandDave.com. I think actually right before the system came out. After we got married is when Art of Play split off. He talked about um, splitting the business into Art of Play and separating it from Dan and Dave. We saw that playing cards were actually becoming the majority of our business. But they were all just our own playing cards. We're avid collectors and users of playing cards, of course. Um, and it didn't really make sense for Dan and Dave at the time to sell other people's products. And so that was sort of the motivation for separating the playing cards from Dan and Dave and launching Art of Play. We wanted Art of Play to be the source for custom designer playing cards. Or 2014, we came up with the idea, because we would see a lot of cardists come to, to these magic conferences and just hang out. After a couple years, we started noticing that. And we're like, okay, let's, Let's do like a little like one day conference at the end of MagicCon and call it Cardistry Con. So yeah, like right away it was just I think a success, and every year we've tried to outdo ourselves. You can almost look at Cardistry in a, a break, like a BC and AD. You know, before the Bucks and after the Bucks. And if you see what they did with playing card design and the whole idea of a playing card market and creating multiple designer you know cards, the releases, the hype the hype building, it wasn't there before the Buck Brothers. So, uh, in my opinion, if Dan and Dave never existed, the playing card industry would be, I don't want to say non-existent, but it would be completely different. 
It's an amazing community, and uh, I think what they've done is, is timeless. So. Who can hate a Buck brother?